Hey guys, welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we have a very cool video for you that looks at a new driver update from AMD and it's more exciting than it sounds, believe me. Uh, recently when I went on the search for the best value sub $200 GPU, my exploration landed me on AMD's Radeon RX 470 as it was clearly the best choice. The new MSRP of $170 US makes this a killer deal and it's also the same situation down under. I also noted in that review, or uh, comparison rather, that AMD was doing an exceptional job with their drivers. And since then, although it's only been a month since I made that comparison, we've already seen a couple of updates from AMD for new games to optimize performance and stuff. So that's been great to see. With drivers playing such a crucial role, it's important for both AMD and Nvidia to keep on top of their updates, delivering optimal performance and the occasional bug fix. Last year it seemed Nvidia was on top of their game here, uh, certainly more so than AMD. This year, however, the roles seem to have reversed. Nvidia has had countless driver-related issues while AMD has been kicking some serious goals. Since forming the Radon Technologies Group, AMD's driver team really has been on top of things. In fact, RTG appears to have been functioning like a well-oiled machine. I'm constantly receiving notifications of incoming drivers for new games, and it's really great to see. As of November, AMD has released 29 separate driver updates providing improved support and optimization for over 28 games. AMD also claims that they've seen over 85 million driver downloads this year, so in short they've been busy beavers. Celebrating that success, AMD is preparing to release their annual big software release. In 2014 we got Catalyst Omega, last year we got the Crimson Edition software, and this year marks the arrival of the Crimson Relive Edition. This latest version focuses on further improving performance, stability and features. The initial release includes a huge amount of bug fixes and stability improvements. Here you can see a slide provided by AMD which outlines some of the top fixes. Feel free to push pause here if you want to check them all out. An interesting new feature that's been added to the advanced display settings and diagnostics provides automatic detection for bad HDMI cables and signal detection. In my experience, HDMI cables seem to either work or they don't, but I'm not an expert here. I probably haven't played with enough rubbish cables. Either way, this is a feature that could improve the end user's experience, as AMD claims. VP9 4K 60Hz GPU accelerated video streaming is supported by the Radeon GCN GPUs, as well as the new AMD Stony Ridge APUs. Operating system support extends to Windows 7, 8.1 and of course 10. For some time now, FreeSync users have been begging AMD to support borderless full screen or borderless window modes, as it's often referred to, with their FreeSync technology. To date, those wanting to use AMD's adaptive sync technology have been forced to run their games in full screen mode, which kind of sucks for those that alt tab a lot. Well, ask and you shall receive it seems with this new brand of AMD. FreeSync now supports the borderless window mode for fast and easy switching of applications while in game. This feature is now supported on all G GCN 2nd gen and newer GPUs. Another new feature is called Radeon Chill, a power saving feature that adjusts the frame rate on the fly depending on the player's activity. AMD claims that this new feature can reduce power consumption by around 30% which is pretty amazing. Of course, with reduced power consumption comes lower operating temperatures and AMD suggests up to a 13% lower operating temp. If all that didn't sound amazing enough, AMD goes on to claim that Radon Chill can also lower the average frame time delivery to display by 32% for a quicker response time. The only catch to all this being that this feature is game dependent, so your mileage may vary. AMD has created a white list of titles though, and hopefully we'll see that list grow dramatically over the coming months. For now it looks like the low level APIs such as DirectX 12 and Vulkan aren't supported though. Showing that they care about all their customers, even those rocking outdated hardware, albeit just outdated, AMD has extended support for their Wattman utility to the Radon 300 series, Select 200 series cards and the Fury range. So that's kind of nice, even if we do prefer Afterburner. AMD claims that in certain games, the new Crimson Relive Edition 16.12 driver boosts frame rate performance by up to 8%. I tested two of the games where performance claims were made. Those games were Deus Ex Mankind Divided and Overwatch. I checked Gears of War 4 as well, even though performance claims weren't made here. The claim was based on performance changes from the older 16.6.2 driver, whereas the previous driver was the 16.11.5. 
Anyway, we decided to test the Crimson Relive Edition against both previous Crimson drivers. Testing with Overwatch at 1080p, we see that AMD has again been making performance improvements with this game. From the 16.6.2 driver to the 16.11.5 driver, AMD was able to find 4% more performance. The Relive driver increased performance further again, albeit only slightly as we see a 2% bump here taking the average frame rate to 162 FPS. That's a 6% jump from the 16.6.2 driver and it's great to see these kinds of gains being made. Deus Ex Mankind Divided was consistently faster by 1 to 2 FPS with the new Relive driver, and although this does fall within the margin of error, we ran this test a considerable amount of times and found the margins were always much the same in favour of the new driver. Finally, we have Gears of War 4, and although AMD made no performance claims here, the results are interesting. The minimum frame rate was consistently higher, much higher with the Relive driver, jumping from 65 FPS to 69 FPS. This allowed the RX 480 to roughly match the GTX 1060 in this title, an impressive result indeed. Last but not least, AMD has something else for us. Capture, customize, share. Oh yeah, finally a real competitor for Nvidia's Shadow Play. Radeon Relive allows users to record not just gameplay footage, but also the Windows desktop and Windows based applications, just as Shadow Play does. You can also stream gameplay, save instant replays, and take screenshots. Additionally, users can now modify settings quickly and conveniently with an easy to access in-game toolbar. By default, Radeon Relive is disabled, so to enable it, users will have to open up the Radeon settings. By default, the Relive recording feature is disabled, so users will have to open up the Radeon settings to enable it manually. Once open, you'll see the Relive tab positioned in the top middle of the screen. From this tab, you can customize hotkeys and settings for recording, streaming, and the overlay. This is also where you can enable desktop recording, which will allow you to capture the overlay, which is normally not captured without this feature enabled. The Radeon Relive overlay is a hotkey customizable toggle that allows users direct access to settings when gaming. Anyway, record is the option I'm most interested in, and I suspect this will be true for most of you as well. As you might imagine, record allows you to start recording whatever it is you're currently doing, whether that be gaming or using a desktop application. There are many tweakable settings available for this feature, including quality resolution, recording bitrate, frame rate, encoding type, and audio bitrate. I should note that the maximum supported bitrate right now is 150 megabits per second, whereas Shadow Play goes as high as 130 megabits per second, and that is the rate I use to show gameplay footage on the channel. I ran into a few issues when testing Relive, though none of them were terribly critical. For whatever reason, most of the time the hotkeys didn't seem to work in-game, forcing me to Alt-Tab, begin recording at the desktop, and then jump back in the game. Another issue I found when testing Gears of War 4 is that when I was recording, the game became v-synced to the frame rate I was recording at, so this meant I couldn't exceed 60 FPS. However, this didn't seem to be an issue in other games such as Battlefield 1, Overwatch, Titanfall 2 and Far Cry Primal for example. Speaking of Far Cry Primal, I used this for a quick performance test. AMD claims that Relive's impact on performance is very minimal, only taxing a high-end system by about 3-4%. They have data from five games to support that claim. Of course I did my own testing, albeit briefly due to time constraints. Anyway, testing with Far Cry Primal using the RX 480, I found that Relive reduced the average frame rate by 4.6%, which is pretty well in line with AMD's claims. Meanwhile, the minimum frame rate was reduced by 4%. Compared to the GTX 1060 using Shadow Play, we saw a 3% reduction here, so overall pretty similar performance. Before wrapping things up, I had intended to do some benchmarking using the Radon Chill feature, but in the end decided against it. Honestly, I didn't have enough time to explore the impact of this feature to the depth that I wanted to. I've done quite a bit of testing, but I'm not confident enough in the numbers to show them. The big issue here being that Radeon Chill will have a greater impact when actually gaming rather than benchmarking. In short, it seems campers have the most to gain here. Messing around with Overwatch, for example, I found that throughout our benchmark run, which sees a constant state of motion and input from the user, Radeon Chill made little to no difference. However, the second I stopped moving, the frame rate on the RX 480 at 1440p dropped down from around 80fps to just 40fps. While extreme movement would boost the frame rate to levels that you would see with Radeon Chill disabled, so around 120fps. 
This wasn't noticeable in game because the second you start moving again the frame rate smoothly climbs back up. It reminded me very much of the engine stop start feature in my Volkswagen. This is a feature I'll have to look at in a separate video and show some sort of side by side gameplay footage with the radon chill feature on and off. Well, AMD's driver team have been very, very busy. Uh, impressive stuff here. The performance gains were great to see, but I was particularly impressed with the minimum frame rates in games such as Gears of War 4. I'm very keen to test other titles. Uh, the new features are also very exciting, and I'm very impressed with Relive, the capture tool. Hopefully this is something AMD will continue to develop. AMD has also released a cool little benchmark tool called Open Capture and Analytics Tool, or OCAT for short, which I believe is based on Presentmon. AMD has added a user-friendly interface while the application supports DirectX 11, DirectX 12 and the Vulkan API. I haven't used this tool much yet, as was much the case with the Relive Capture tool. I was having issues enabling it uh, in-game using the hotkeys. With Vega just around the corner, this massive driver update is very, very well timed. Uh, this is something that AMD hasn't always been good at doing in the past. We've sort of seen massive driver updates come after a big release. So yeah, it's great to see you added performance, but it didn't make the release itself as impactful as it could have been. So I feel like they haven't fully capitalized there. But this release, I think the timing wise, it's really gonna strengthen AMD's position. I just hope they get the reward they deserve for all their hard work. Having just recommended the RX 470 as the best sub $200 graphics card last month, anyone who purchased this capable graphics card, it'll feel a bit like all your Christmases have come at once because now you can look forward to slightly better performance and new features. I love what AMD has done here. The next few months should be an exciting time for AMD fans. Well, hell, really, it should be an exciting time for PC gamers on a whole. Speaking of exciting stuff, I finally just purchased my first 4GB RX 480. I know, about time. Uh, I've had numerous 8GB models on hand for a while now, but for getting a 4GB card has just proven difficult. I'm not sure why. Uh, it's been that way ever since release. Uh, but they have been available uh, at retail for a while now, and I just haven't got around to buying one, been busy with other things. But I've pulled the trigger, i bought one now, and I can finally do that 4GB testing you guys have been asking for. So the plan is to test all the current generation NVIDIA and AMD GPUs and I will be using the new driver that you've just seen for testing the AMD GPUs. Uh, I will be testing with pretty much all the big 2016 releases uh, for one huge comparison. In total there will be 19 games tested and as I said they're all going to be 2016 releases so any big titles from 2015 unfortunately I will be dropping from this comparison. So 19 games, 11 GPUs, 12 if I end up testing the Titan XP, I'm not sure if I'm going to throw that in there just yet. Uh, two resolutions covering 1080p and 1440p and of course I'll be making three runs per test and taking the average uh, minimum and average frame rate result. So in total I'll be conducting well over 1200 benchmark runs. So be sure to keep an eye out for that, it should be pretty epic. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. What do you guys think about the Crimson Relive Edition driver? Uh, let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, put them down there. I'll be sure to read them, answer them. And yeah, that about wraps this one up. I will catch you guys next time.